performance on D3 Windows 10.3. We've done lots of things to improve the performance of D3 in this release, and we're excited to tell you about those things. Most of the things that we're going to present to you at this time are things that you're going to get and not have to do anything with. However, we will have a demonstration on some of the effects or changes that will happen because of the changes that we've done to performance on D3 Windows. So the first thing that we've done is we have demodularized some of our internal routines. Now, modularization generally is a good thing because it means reuse of code and it keeps things very uh, componentized so that things can be called multiple times. However, an over demodularization can lead to some performance issues, and that's what we found. There were a number of cases, and, and typically it was, I think it was only five to seven, somewhere in that range of cases where we had highly used routines that were only called from one place. And instead of calling out to an external routine, it's much more efficient to embed that routine inside the, the other routine that calls it. And that's why you get this notion of all these different subroutines that get down embedded into one, one function instead of all these different subfunctions that are only ever called from the one place. So that uh, gained us some level of performance, uh, the granularity of that, we're, we don't know, and, and different people in different applications will experience different things, but we estimate anywhere from 3 to 10 percent. Next uh, level of things that we've done that affects all the platforms, so that first one also affects the Unix platforms as well, and as does this one, but for, in this particular case, this one does have a bigger impact when using the FSI. And so this is with translates. And, and it's not all translates that are going to benefit from this because there's some translates, like if you've got a, a an order file that's translating to your customer file to pick up the customer name. Typically, in one run of your orders, you're not going to have several orders from the same customer. You might have two or three, but the vast majority of your orders are all going to be from unique customers. And so you're going to be translating unique values. So each read of each record is not going to be uh, preserved by caching those reads. But, but what we're talking about are, are like, and we know we've all done this. We've, we've got a, a file that's got like maybe 10 to 20 items in it that are translated values for codes that we've embedded in our in a database. And so in our example here is a type in the parts file that's got, you know, there's, we only sell a dozen different types. And so when you go through your, your parts file to categorize those, those products by the, the type, either the name or the category of those types, those, when you translate to that value, because there's only a dozen or so, those are all going to be read one time from the other file and it'll be cached then locally. And this this has a much bigger performance impact when you're talking about the FSI because it's more expensive to go out and to read the records out of the FSI than it is to read it directly from the VME. Yeah. But even the VME has a minor performance gain. But the FSI, it's major performance gains here. So if you're doing those types of, of things in your application. So again, this is a freebie. You don't have to do anything. We've embedded this into the product to to cache these translated values. Um, now on to things that are specific only to Windows. Uh, and one of the things that we've done is we've looked at some of the optimization settings within the Visual Studio build of our product. Um, there are reasons why we can't do everything in our product. We're looking at in future releases to eliminate those. But what we've done is the ones that we can do, we've turned on some optimization levels so that you get better performance out of, out of our code. And that's during our build process, hence the construction uh, cartoon there. The other thing is there were some highly used routines that, you know, we are a database. Database is typically string manipulation is the thing that's uh, used most in the within the database application. And so we've looked at 
the number of different types of string move operations that happen within the database. We looked at them carefully, closely, and we've optimized them manually, not you know, in, in order to also assist the the optimization setting in Visual Studio and other and other compilers to be able to um, optimize those routines, you know, we've done things like take in non-changing uh, conditions out of loops and potentially made two loops instead of one loop where we've put the condition ahead of time and it goes into this loop and does it this way. And if the condition is the other way, then it'll do the other loop. And so the code looks bigger, but um, the condition's not, that's a static condition that doesn't change for each element in the loop. That condition is not being tested every time inside the loop, and that makes it a lot faster. And the other thing that we've done is we made better utilization of local variables so that the optimizing compilers can treat those local variables as register elements and not having to reload them from their memory address every time they're referenced. So you've got object pointers and things like that that reference elements within those objects. If you re reference those elements inside loops each and every time, it's going to go back and, and load one or two different memory locations in order to dereference that, that object element. Whereas making putting it into a local variable allows the compiler to realize that, hey, this is a non-changing element, therefore it can store that into a register and optimize it a lot faster and make the code run faster. So we've done some, some things like that by looking down at the machine instructions to be able to make this, the, the code run faster. Um, one of the other things, this is was a very substantial set of work that we did is we've we've made the process of getting the data out of the FSI and this is specific to the FSI we've made these queries multi-threaded so the the top one up there so I should have drawn a line probably between these two different things but the first start where it's got the three blocks that go across it gets a block of data it processes that block of data and then goes back to get another block of the data the stuff that's in orange is what's happening within the FSI the stuff that's in purple is what's happening in the VME or the, or the traditional virtual code. So it's very cyclical and very lockstep where the FSI grabs a block of data, gives it back to the VME, the VME processes it for its selection criteria and sorting mechanisms, then it goes back to the FSI, waits for it to process, comes back, gets another block. What we've done now is we start this up we go out, we start get the first block of data from the FSI. We've spun off a thread in order to do this now. And we come back with that first block. It starts processing. While it's processing it, the FSI, that other thread, is now getting the next block of data so that by the time the VME is done processing it, that next block of data is about done or has already been completed so that you've got two different threads that are working simultaneously um, in order to, rather than sequentially, in order to get your data back. And so we've got significant performance gains. Not quite cut the performance in half, but pretty close to that because of the two different threads that you've got running here. Now, obviously your, your uh, results will vary based on other use of the machine at the time, but it, assuming you've got CPU power to spare, you can get up to or very close to 50% performance gains because of this. Um, the next one kind of goes right along with this one, and it's the same type of a thing, but now what we're doing is we're passing some of that selection criteria down to the FSI. So before, if you had, um, and this is part of what I'm going to demonstrate later on in this uh, WebEx here, this or this webinar, I will be demonstrating the the behavior of this and how it affects you and what you will see differently from within your application. But what basically what happens here when we start, we go out and we say, instead of just returning all of the data from the file so that the virtual engine will uh, process that data and eliminate everything, we go and we pre-qualify some of that data. Now, not all elements are capable yet of being pre-qualified, and so it's very the simple operations um, where it says an attribute equals this value or is greater than this value or less than this value 
are are capable of being processed in this pre-selection capabilities. Complex correlatives, translates, things like that are not dealt with within this, but those conditions within your AQL statement are always returned as true, so we will return more data rather than less data, so we shouldn't ever have a problem. It still does go through and processes those that block of data that's been returned from the FSI in the same manner within the VME, so your results from a the data perspective will be identical. The difference is, is because it's being pre-selected, if your pre-selection criteria eliminates all the records, what you'll see instead of you know 400 items out of a million, you will see 400 items selected out of 400 because the FSI is only returning the 400 selected items. So that's that is the difference that you will see in in this performance optimization. But what that does is it it pushes the selection criteria mechanism down closer to where the data exists in the FSI. And so the VME is not having to loop through and process nearly as many things. And so the dot, dot, dot here at the end, the number of blocks of data that's being returned from the FSI will be minimized and therefore you will get better performance. And this again is not quantifiable by us, but rather based on your your particular query and how much the pre-selection is able to eliminate the number of blocks or the number of records that's being returned from the FSI back to the VME. So we'll move on to our demonstration phase but right now, but before we do, I want to show you a couple of uh, programs that I've used in this demonstration program. We're using the standard X demo account that comes with the 10.3 product. Um, I did have to make some modifications and that was in order to show some of this, I needed to enlarge our members file. And so what I've done is you can see here down on line nine, I've increased it by 400. You know, I've copied the same records 399 times, so it's 400 times bigger. Before I run this program, I did increase the modulo of the file to uh, somewhere around 130,000 frames, just so that it would all fit in there nice and hashed properly. And the uh, the other program on the right side of the screen is is Timit or Time It, which is just a little routine so I can time any query that we come up with. So uh, you know it's a simple little program to show uh, System 12 before and after the execution of the uh, TCL line. So we use those two programs in order to uh, do our demo. Here we are on our Win D3 Windows 10.2.5 system, and I'll just do a witch so that you can see that's what it is. 10.2.5. Obviously, I've got some later patches and stuff loaded on here, but uh, anyway, it is a 10.2.5 system, and I'm in the X demo account. I've already enlarged the members file here, and uh, we're just going to pick a random member, whoops, this one here, uh, Linda Adcock. And I've actually already done this, so it's in my stack, so I don't have to type it all over again. So I just did, I used a simple built-in A1 for the last name, attribute 1, and first name is an ADI, a simple ADI for Linda. So it should select this and all 399 of the other Linda Adcocks that were copied based on the... Uh, large so um, and I'm using my Timit program to get the timing of it and you'll see how fast it is on 1025 it takes a little bit of time here and you'll actually see how many items are in the file because this is not using any of the pre-selector or the multi-threaded mechanism this is the old style way of doing the select um, it takes a little bit of time to run and it takes about 26 seconds. We did it again. I've done this pretty consistently. It's anywhere from 25 to 26 seconds running on this machine. So now we'll switch over to our 10.3.2 system. All right, here we are on our D3 Windows 10.3.2 system. And we will do the same thing that we did on our 10.2.5 system, show that we're on 10.3.2. Here it is, it's brand new pretty much. And we will now, have, well, we're also in the uh, X demo account here as well. We'll CT 
that same member. It is Linda Adcock. The large members program was run exactly the same, so we've got the exact same data set, and we'll go ahead and run that same program. Again, it's in my stack, so it should come up the exact same way. Same statement as before, and here you'll see that it does run a whole lot faster. So um, we did tremendous amount of performance improvements between 10.25 and 10.3. It's uh, an order of magnitude faster, as you can see now. The machines aren't exactly identical as far as uh, configuration, but they're close enough that it shouldn't make that big of a difference. Uh, the other thing that I did want to show you here while I have you is let's look at the dictionary for this members file. Oops. And you can see that, so I was using the uh, last name for attribute, or first name for attribute 2. Now I'm going to use full name because it's got a little bit more complicated correlative here where it uses the end processing code and, and concatenates it to another one. And so it's that will not be processed by the um, pre-selector. And so if we just change our statement down here to use full name and give it the wild card so that it picks up the last name as well. You'll see that instead of 400 items out of 400, it takes a tiny little bit longer. It, it actually, the pre-selector brought back 2,800 items you can see here, but it still only matched because that only processed this one pre in the pre-selector instead of both criteria. This one was eliminated, so it brought back everything that, that you know, it, it assumed that this criteria was always going to match within the FSI because it couldn't process it, so it brought back all 2,800 items that had the last name of Adcock, and then in the virtual engine, it selected through and got the just the 400, which is the exact same selection that we had before. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of the improved performance that you will get by upgrading to 10.3.2 and also gives you a little bit of idea of how maybe you can structure or do some of your queries so that you may take advantage of the pre-selection mechanism in the FSI to make your, your queries run even faster.